that I think it brings us nicely, thank you very much, Claude, to our stocks of the day. Look, I thought I'd throw these, these guys a bit of a curveball and ask them to comment on some of the U.S. mega tech caps that reported in the U.S. through the overnight period. So that would be, of course, Meta, Apple, and Amazon. So we know that Meta shares really marched higher in extended trade, hitting a record high in just about 10 minutes. It actually put on equivalent to $110 billion in market cap. I mean, we, we just can't even really compare here, can we? It's going to be paying its shareholders a dividend. First ever 50 cents per share. Apple beat on sales and profit thanks to the iPhone, but China was the weak spot and iPad sales down significantly in the market, not treating that one so kindly in after hours trade. Atlassian, so the good old Aussie story, also reported um, shares lower in after hours trade, net loss of nearly 85 million US dollars. Sales were up 21%, but does the market care when you're still posting a loss? And then Amazon, it beat fourth quarter revenue expectations. Looks like everything is growing for Amazon ads, um, sales, AWS revenue rose 14% to $170 billion, again, beating the street. So what do our expert guests make of those big mega tech earnings? And I don't ask you guys just to be flippant. You know, really, if you are interested in growth companies, if you're interested in returns, when you think about valuations a lot, which I know you both do, like Luke, should an Aussie investor have exposure to one couple of these mega cap US stocks? Oh, for sure, Nadine. And, and I would probably do that through like a NASDAQ or an S&P 500 ETF. I, I probably wouldn't go looking to, to pick one or two of them directly. But um, look, it's, it, it's fascinating. And, and you're right, like Claude and I, we're, we're primarily ASX small micro cap investors. Um, but funny enough, this morning, a fellow investor sent me an email and said, I know this is not your space, but check out the Facebook slash Meta results. I, was, I actually did that this morning before our emails went around. Um, and it's pretty remarkable. I mean, you know, these are businesses, trillion dollar businesses now, in the case of Apple, Microsoft and, and the other giants, um, still growing you know, 25 to 30, 40 percent. Um, but I think what really sets it apart is it's the leverage that they're seeing over that. So, so take Facebook, which is one I did look at a bit closer, 25% revenue growth, but an 8% decline in their cost base. So you're achieving really strong growth, like billion, you know, billions and billions of dollars in growth and actually taking costs away from your bottom line. Um, and of course, that opens up the insane profitability that we saw in the market responding strongly. Now, compare that to Atlassian, which again, I, I must admit, I didn't look at that result in, in depth. But to your point that you made, um, there's other businesses that are showing growth, which is fantastic, but having to spend to get that growth. And of course, the market's not really rewarding that. So look, I think what you're looking at at this point in time for, for Google, Amazon, Facebook, um, maybe Apple, not so much, but those first three. Um, probably went a little bit crazy in that 2021 period with investments and headcount, and they've made some you know, well-reported adjustments to their cost base. But I think what's probably caught the market by surprise is the strength of the business is still being able to grow, even if, even as they've done that. So, look, it's 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 hard to to, to fault these behemoths, um, and I think where they sort of set themselves apart from businesses of the past is they are truly global. I mean. Uh, these are no longer just American businesses dominating an American index. They're, they're, they're global businesses um, and still have plenty of growth potential in front of them because they are so capital light in the way they operate as well. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, it's not the it's not the target for the capital. But yes, I do agree with you. If you are a you know more passive investor, you need exposure to these businesses. These will be the businesses that are around for the next 10, 20 and you know, however many decades into the future. Yeah, because that's the thing, Claude, is that if you think about pure AI, pure chip technology, you know, a lot of the cloud computing stuff, we have sort of derivatives that we can invest in as far as derivatives of that may, you know, that major theme. But, you know, we're, we're, we're lacking, arguably, you know, any really direct way to play on some of those thematics, those key themes or big way to. What do you think? Yeah, I, I definitely think that it's slim pickings on those big themes on the ASX, that's for sure. Uh, in terms of the the broader question about should 
Australian investors have exposure to these kind of companies? Yes, I think so. I I actually don't own any of the the ones that we're specifically talking about in terms of uh, Meta, Apple, uh, Atlassian, uh, and um, Amazon. But I do own shares in in Google's been a holding for, for me for many years that I've been continuing to add to over the years. Um, and I own shares in another US tech company called CrowdStrike, which is again a sort of platform for cybersecurity. And I think that that's going to be- become increasingly relevant and they seem to have good technology there. So I do have um, exposure to those. I, I think also for some people, it might be more appropriate to just own the ETF as Luke suggested. Uh, but yeah, overall, it, I think that the real theme here with those all of these big companies is, are we moving towards a world where actually they're these sort of oligopoly of extremely powerful uh, sort of uh, enterprise software companies or some kind of tech companies that run some crucial part of our economy or or system of society? And they are just become, and do these ones sort of form little oligopolies where there are maximum kind of two in a space and, and they become very powerful and of course then have pricing power and stuff like that. Are we moving in a world more in that direction? If so, then you definitely, definitely want to own some of these big beer moths. So I'm not against any of those ones at all. Um, at, at this moment in time, you know, Atlassian is probably the one I have owned before of, of those ones. I also like Apple because it has uh, the ecosystem effect with, with people using its software and equipment. So I could definitely see myself being a shareholder of Apple. In terms of Meta, it's not one that I've I've been on myself. It, it's not actually my preferred. I know it's the it's the stock of the moment right now, but that's partly just because it's been in in the doghouse previously in a couple of years, so it's recovering from that. So uh, all of them great companies, though, and invest and investment worthy and and totally considerable uh, for someone's greater portfolio. Okay. Uh, just because so many yeah. people are looking at it, I don't I don't put all my time in trying to um, get an edge in any of those companies. All right.